Donnybrook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS. You look a little like Steve Bannon. Right there. Money, 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 money. Money! Hey, thanks to St. Crocky, <laughs> we're all going to have a very Merry Christmas around here. There'll be some fighting and fussing over it. But, hey, welcome to Donnybrook. Alvin Reed sitting in for Charlie Brennan. Thank you for joining us. First up, Wendy Weiss. KTRS, how are you tonight? Doing very well, Alvin, thank you. All right, one of our founders, Ray Hartman, got your name right this week. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another founder, Bill McClellan, and a first-time guest. You know it, I hope we don't pay for it tonight. <laughs> no. Elliot Davis, <laughs> not to worry, Fox good to be, not not to worry, good to be here. here. My, my uh, pleasure. Right, well, congratulations to you also. You are a 2021 Media Person of the Year by the St. Louis, named by the St. Louis Press Club. <laughs> One of the honorees, oh. one of uh, five individual honorees yeah. in KETC, yeah. Channel 9. Yeah, absolutely. Also, I'm, we're going to congratulate yeah. our crew from Living St. Louis, uh, Jim Kircher, Anna-Marie Berger, Ruth Azell, and Brooke Butler. Congratulations to all. Yay. And if you watched football Saturday, you saw something special, right, Bill? Yeah, I'd like to uh, commend Sharon Haskins, who's our... Longtime receptionist, and back when uh, we had the phone call show, mm -hmm. your turn, Sharon would often screen phone calls for us. And Sharon's grandson, Hassan, plays football at the University of Michigan, and his sen this is his senior year, and last Saturday in the big game against Ohio State, Hassan scored not one, not two, but five touchdowns. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. An unbelievable performance. And that is Sharon Haskins' grandson. And yeah, she's so, a superstar. Right. Yes. Now, I, wanted, a superstar. I wanted Michigan to win that football game, but that was special. I, that, I, that, was, like, was wow. right. that was great. Right. So she's back in the office now. Yeah. So yeah, we're she all is. one. She is, and she's floating. All, yeah. all, all about the big blue. <laughs> yeah. So we're all one big happy family. And uh, we, we, we had $790 million coming our way. We're going to get $500 million because the attorneys who represented us in the case against the NFL and Stan Kroenke are going to get a big chunk of that. But of that $500 million. Okay. So, Bill, where's the money going to go? Does the county deserve its share? Uh, will we all live happily ever after or are tough times ahead? Well, we're not going to all live happily ever after. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, this has been, it was a wonderful moment in time when we got this, and now it looks like the jackals are going to be fighting over the, the carcass with the city alderman saying that the county doesn't deserve a full third because the county wasn't involved in the Riverfront Stadium, what I used to call fiasco. Now I consider it brilliant. <laughs> 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 when we spent 17 million on what clearly was a losing thing, but but I, I think, and maybe because I live in the county, I think the county deserves its full third. Yeah, see, I know that County Executive Stanger had the state constitution behind him, and that it would have to go before the voters. Any kind of uh, layout like that uh, would have to go before the voters. But I'm actually in agreement with the the alderman that if the county. Uh, did not jump on board with this in terms of that stadium, which was the linchpin that ended up bringing us the $790 million windfall. I'm okay with the county, maybe, and I live in the county too, you know, with the county not getting a full third. And I know that's, my, my house is probably going to be egged by the time I get home, but I really do believe that way. I I personally think the county should not be penalized for having done the right thing. The reason St. Louis won, and I was one of the people that thought this lawsuit was ludicrous, was not because of this con we ran about the stadium, okay, which was never going to happen. The whole thing, bless his heart, Dave Peacock, that was never happening. And the reason we won is Jim Bennett and the others brilliantly identified the fact that the NFL had not followed its relocation guidelines and was very vulnerable. And they identified it, they seized on it, give them credit, they put in the work, and they were able to outsmart 
than some of these national, you know, the NFL's lawyers. But at the at the re, the county not being willing to violate its own ordinances and 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 have and, and and not have an election when its ordinances and the cities clearly called as a fallout of the uh, 2000 uh, fiasco with the Cardinal Stadium clearly called for the voters to have a say. Well, well, to, well, punish, Ray, to punish Ray, him for that is wrong. Ray, Ray, Ray l l let me argue against myself here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, now that you I'm know, on the, your the, side, the, you're going to change the, me. The, yeah, yeah, okay. really. Okay. The, I talked the, the, the Riverfront Stadium right. was part of the, the argument. In, exactly. in the sense that the, the, the NFL's failure to follow their relocation right. Right. guidelines, part of that had to do with the fact that the St. Louis was making an effort to get a new stadium. So I, I can I, understand yeah. the alderman's point of view. Thank you. I and, and, and now I'm trying to be on your side. So, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be on the side of the taxpayers on this. <laughs> and Who paid here's for what it? I'm going to say, that we should use a lot of that money to pay off the bonds on the dome. We owe like a hundred million dollars, I think, <laughs> still on the on the. the remember the dome yeah. where the Rams play, guys? Yeah, you're you're stuff right I think up. we still owe a hundred million dollars. That money is coming from state taxpayers, city taxpayers, county taxpayers. That since the '90s have been paying what 24 million a year or something like that. That, mm -hmm. that have been paying all this money for this dome. So I think at some point in time we may want to take a big step back and say. Well, can taxpayers recoup some of the money that they have spent on this deal? And well, so, Ellen, Ellen, so, do you think the state, the, the out state, should be getting some of this money too? Is that what you're suggesting? I, what I'm suggesting is that we pay off the I bonds on this dome for a hundred million dollars, so this money doesn't have to continue coming out of mm -hmm. taxpayer funds, a hotel. Uh, I, I think it's the well, hotel uh, motel tax, and maybe we, that money can go to some other uses. But let's look at let's 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 be prudent. Right. Is what I would say. Right. I would I say let's so. look at the I, bills I will say that this. we have I still think and the bill that we and I think, think the, the county, the county, and I'm going to say this too, and I'm agree with uh, Bill here. Uh, the county should be. Uh, get a hefty chunk of it as the state, even though they're not a part well, of it, th because not a party all the these guys got together and agreed to fork over all this money to make this dome possible. The deal wouldn't have even happened without St. Louis County, without the state of Missouri, and without the city, and the county deserves something. The, the plaintiffs are the ones who yeah, get the, the, the money. The plaintiffs, the plaintiffs the money. are the I county, agree. the city, right. and the regional sports commission. Mm -hmm. And and I, I believe the bonds are actually paid off. You're talking about, although we still have the, the tax. Mm -hmm. but. The the no, they'll I, be paid off in 2024. Oh, okay. Clearly. Well, fundamentally, right. I thought they're paid off, but fundamentally, my, my, my but car the point will be paid is, off this that, 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 about <laughs> I think that there's going to be hundred million. It'll bucks. be. I will say that watching yeah. the fight over this will be more interesting than the last yeah. decade of the Rams ever was. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you on this topic. I'll say this. I still think this goes to court. And I still think we would have possibly lost at some level if we did they, that fool of an owner, Stan Kroenke, out there with the Rams. And when he put the NFL on notice that, hey, he I'm not gonna, I, hey, I'm not I paying lied. this by they, myself. Yeah, I, I lied. lied when I, I think said, they said like, oh, we got something for you, buddy. They, absolutely. Right. So and I, would say I think better, that you got to give the lawyers credit. I will right. say this: the, yeah. the decision to settle was absolutely brilliant because our vulnerability was on appeal, yeah. and and I think it was a great decision. Obviously, they were vindicated in, in pursuing their theory. I don't think that has anything to do with vindicating what was a pretty facetious process. I don't, I don't think it's the same thing. I think the lawyers were, were validated and vindicated for, for seeing what they saw. It, it really doesn't judge. And there's no way you could go back and say, oh, we should have gone along with this yeah, nonsense. All right. all right. Speaking of battles, once again, all right, we got a Cole County judge has decided while ruling on some other case that the mask mandates in the St. Louis City and St. Louis County should just be thrown completely out of the window. Uh, they don't do anything. They don't stop any COVID-19 from spreading. Just really kind of some questionable judgment by the judge. Sam Page really took it to him, called this judge, needs to get uh, reelected in a Trump-loving county. Wendy, where are we at? And all this. And that was L O V I N apostrophe, yeah. right? I mean, he was he was actually uh, being really glib for Sam Payne. Yeah, I know we that's how I felt Trump about it. Loving, yes. Trump loving yeah. Republican yeah. County. Yeah. Um, if you if you read this story, you'll have absolutely no doubt when it comes to why 
this uh, this this virus has been allowed to to spread as rapidly as it has because every single person who was quoted, every official, every elected official who was quoted has a different story. They all have a different story. Uh, Judge Daniel Green, as you said, mm -hmm. criticized by Sam Page. Um, Sam Page is saying that no, the judge's order doesn't stand in, in the county. Uh, I believe Eric Schmidt is, he's also sued. So um, it's, it's just a hodgepodge of, of, of different, uh, you know, this, this, this handiwork. And no wonder people are confused. Somebody walked into the radio station just the other day and said, are we supposed to wear a mask in the, you know, out in, in Westport? Or do we have to wear a mask in here? I think at this point people are doing what they think they should do to protect other people. I, at least I hope they are. All right, we're going to come back to this. But first, we haven't had the pleasure of doing this in a while. I thought that I would miss it. And, uh, you did. I did. I actually <laughs> did. Hey, we wouldn't be here without your support. Uh, we're going to talk about how you can help us out at Channel 9. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Ern Marty and I'm thrilled to be here tonight with you as we enjoy the lively sounds of the witty political banter with the Donnie Brookers tonight. Um, Nine PBS works hard to be a trusted news resource for you. Like Donnie Brook that we're watching right now um, and hearing just the thoughts and opinions of these journalists here, um, but also national shows like Frontline or um, the, what uh, PBS NewsHour. Those are trusted resources, valued resources of news that we can only provide to you um, if you become a member tonight. That's right, we rely on viewers just like you at home. And so we have an awesome way to say thank you to you, some great thank you gifts. So let's dive in, shall we? Because we want to say thank you when you become a member right now. So at the $75 level, that's one time $75, you have a choice. You can get the mug, which you see every Donnie Brooker every week here at the table using that mug. It's really handy, it's durable. I, I love the design. So you get the $75 level, at, um, so you can get the mug, or you can get a ticket, one ticket, $75 to Donnie Bash. That's gonna be on June 9th of 2022. And oh my goodness, you guys, we're so excited to be hosting this in person again. You get to be together, see the Donnie Brookers live. And so that's not all though, because you also have the choice of becoming a sustainer tonight at the $12 a month level. So at the sustaining level, you will get two tickets to see Donnie Bash live in person, but also the ever so lovely Donnie Brook mug here, nine PBS mug. Like I said, it's a camp mug. It's awesome, it's durable, so handy. I love it. Um, but you do not want to miss the, the incredible opportunity to see the Donnie Brookers live on stage. You get to hear that witty banter that I referenced that you're watching right, right here tonight. You get to hear that in person. I mean, who would not want to miss that, right? And so also what I missed to tell you was that at these levels, both levels, you will receive access to nine PBS Passport. And so that is it's an, it gives you an extended variety of um, PBS programs on demand on the PBS video app. I love it so much. You can stream it whenever you like. You can catch up on local programming, catch up on um, a lot of your favorite national programming like Masterpiece or Frontline like I referenced. Um, but yeah, so right now though, we are going to head over to the table with Kate and a couple of people that need no introduction. <laughs> So I won't. I won't introduce them at all because you do know them. You come here every Thursday night because you want to see what is happening here in St. Louis and what they're thinking about it. And when you guys get together each Thursday afternoon, late afternoon, to talk about it, do you have to fight for the subjects that you want brought up or does Charlie tell you what you have to talk about? Well, since he's not here, we'll talk about it. Since he's not here. Yeah. I mean, you know, he... He does kind of dominate, doesn't he, guys? Oh, he, he's, he's a tyrant. He's a tyrant. He's a tyrant. It's kind of That's why the word. He's not here. No, we he's don't. wonderful. No, no, no. We're all very respectful, actually. I mean, sometimes we don't come across as respectful as we usually are on the air, but um, we do respect each other's opinions. And well, the odd thing, Wendy, is like tonight when I said something that I thought I firmly believed you, <laughs> and then Ray said, I agree with you. And, and then Bill and then I said, realized well, wait a minute. That's <laughs> not right. Bill, Bill had a crisis. He had a crisis in that moment. He thought, wait a second. 
Ray agrees with me. Something well, I like it when I agree with I Ray. You do. But in this yeah. instance, well, I, that was great. I think it might have been. You know, we don't have that many historical moments, but I think it may have been the first time in 35 years where somebody was talked out of their position because I agreed with it. You know, which is particularly, in, in his case, he, I think he probably got it right the second time. But it was, it was uh, yeah, the, it, was, it was an unusual thing. I, I, uh, well, the line of the night was when Bill said, I'm disagreeing with myself. Yeah. I'm having a disagreement yeah. with myself. Oh. Well, we all have that moment where yeah. we're actually talking and, and your think, brain is saying like, what the heck are you talking what about? Are you <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, I, we did, by the way, we do miss Charlie Brennan very much, although Mr. Reed has uh, oh, no. did a magnificent yeah. job tonight. In his place and, and, and as one of the two people at the table who's done this very poorly, that job, uh, you, it's all yours. That's I don't know nice. who that other person is. Yeah, I'll be, leave that one alone. Yeah. I will leave that one alone. No, 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 I, I, I'm not. Uh, did, yeah, did I do it once? Oh, that, I don't know. You and I remember Don't you remember you and I did it every year for a few years? It was oh, horrible. Yeah. Oh, we it was horrible. terrible. I, 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 was wor I think that. I was worse than you, but it was I've erased that memory. It was close. Well, well let's get back to what we do well, okay? Oh, what we yeah, do yeah. well is have thoughtful discussion yeah. here on Donnybrook. And I think most of you do have a position that people expect you to start from. Um, and you, you're saying, what does that mean? What no, I mean no, no, is no, they I'm expect just... you to be left. They expect you to be leaning right. They mm. expect you to be leaning left. They expect you to be more left, probably. Mm. Actually, I get all the time, so like, you're a much more conservative person than I thought you were. And I always then greet them like, with yeah. the fact, it's like, first of all, when you have kids, suddenly the world changes. Yeah. And, but you know, the yeah. first time I was ever on this show, my youngest daughter had just been born, was like a week old. Oh, and wow. I said, over oh, years, you said like, oh, yeah, now I got to be a little bit more stern, you know, like, <laughs> with the world, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm a dad yeah, now. Yeah, I'm a dad I'm now. A dad now. <laughs> well, you know, and, uh, the people who enjoy watching the show have all kinds of different uh, positions, and we're gonna let them know how they can join us at Donnie Bash right now. So let's dive in, shall we? You can join us at the $75 level one time. You can have the choice of receiving a ticket to Donnie Bash. Like I said, you absolutely do not wanna miss this. But also, you might be at home and you're really enjoying that mug right there on the table that you see the Donnie Burgers drinking out of, and you're like, I'm quite jealous of that. I want that mug. You know what? Hey, go for it. $75 level. And then at the $12 a month level, you can become a sustaining member. That's right. $12 a month, you can get two tickets to Donnie Bash. And that's on June 6, 2022, next year at 6 p.m. So you can have yourself a really great evening, um, live, enjoy the witty banter that we hear the Donnie Brickers um, here live right now on TV. But you get to see it in person. But also you get to drink some coffee or tea or hot cocoa this season out of that mug. That's right. So you can think of 9 PBS every morning when you have your coffee. Um, so yeah, and you can just be exactly like your favorite Donnie Burgers with that mug. And each of these levels though come with access to 9 PBS Passport. And 9 PBS Passport gives you extended access to a wide variety of your PBS favorites. And so you can catch up on local, local programs or your national favorites like Masterpiece, that's one of my favorites. I love those shows. Um, but yeah, so don't forget, become a member at 800-568-9099 or go to the website at 9pbs.org. That's N-I-N-E-P-B-S dot O-R-G. So, all right, well, let's join the Donnie Brookers again and hear what else they have to say. Thank you so much. And the mass debate goes on. Thoughts? It's going to ultimately get solved. It's all political right now. Uh, people are looking at their political futures, candidates and everything, based on the position that they take on this issue. Uh, and so you're getting people that uh, may be more conservative areas are saying, I better go with the mass, uh, against mass mandates and all of that, mandatory. And that's the key word, uh, mandatory mask mandates. I better go against that or I'll get voted and thrown out the door. Uh, if you're in democratic areas, you like to say, hey, I have the freedom to support mask mandates. I'm in favor of masks. The uh, 
COVID vaccine has hit the African-American community inordinately hard. I think in the city, they were saying 70 percent of the new cases were African-American. So uh, I'm very uh, keenly interested in that and in the impact that is having in the black community in every place. I'm concerned about everyone, but I'm looking at the, the, the impact that is having on minority communities. So I'm all in favor of whatever you can do to try to stem this thing. It's going to get worked out. Yeah. We're going to have to get to a point, obviously, where us, we as people are going to have to come together. And I, I don't think, uh, you know, us as people, I don't know how far apart we are, but we get the politicians steadily whipping it up. Why? Because they're trying to get some votes. That's right. And they're saying, you know, it, it, most and most of them will tell you, even the Republicans uh, that I talk to in a council, I interview a number of them, they'll say, I'm for mass, not for mass mandates. Why? Because their constituents are saying, we don't want we that. Don't want the mandates, right? <laughs> so, well, I, yeah. There are no mass. I and, and I agree with you that it's going to come to an end. I think vaccines will be around as an issue longer than mass. But I think that you're right that, that, that people talk about mandates. I fault our side, my side on that, because there are no mandates. They're all directives. They're all really strong suggestions, as they should be. The, the problem I have is that the people on the pro-mask, whatever you call it, I would argue pro-science, pro-health side, don't fight like the people on the other side. How many times have you had Republicans asked on camera, what is your solution? Okay, we know what you're against. We know about your call for freedom. What do you, if you were the county executive, if you were the county health department, what would you do to stop the spread of COVID? Because you notice they don't even have an answer. They don't have a plan, and it bothers me they don't even get asked. And this week, Faisal Khan made a lot of people mad, Dr. Khan, from the, uh, the, the acting director of county health. And, of course, he got turned down by the county health, uh, by, the by the county, county council, 5-2, to be the director. He'll continue as acting director. And I say good for him. He called out the lunatic fringe, and he called them the lunatic fringe. Okay, well, he, and, and I think he that's fine. Like right, right. And, and by the right. way, I don't condone what he did that one night where he got, he got I think he, he overreacted to being called a lot of bad names, but I think he's absolutely right. It's time our side fought, fought back. Well, well, well oh if, God, if, right? if we're talking about uh, Elliot saying that maybe mm -hmm. the people will finally get together, and, and, and I don't have that much faith in us, but if we are ever going to get together, it's not going to be with the health director mm -hmm. calling people, his opponents, the lunatic fringe. And, and when you right. say he was getting bumped around by people. I didn't he went, say he, he was. Oh, okay. okay. I say he wasn't. Okay, honest. been being yelled at or he something. Was, he went on national TV right, right. and said that he, he was had been chest bumped. Yeah, here. Chest okay. bumped. And right. he, he, he lied on national TV, mm -hmm. making the whole region look bad. And, and now he's calling people lunatic fringe. It'd be nice to see somebody trying to bring people together, and I don't have any faith that they'll be able to, but it's certainly not going to be by calling names. No, and then don't forget that Sam Page backed him up and actually doubled down on that yeah. untruth about being shoulder bumped with all of the television cameras proving that he was not. So, I, I, is it, once I think, again, it's, I, in, in, in follow-up to your point, I, I think the people who are supportive of masks and vaccines are fighting back. Uh, we've got, uh, what is it, Dr. Fauci on all the time. We've had a whole task force that comes out every day and tells us, here's where we are in COVID, guys. Here's what we need to do. Uh, you've got all uh, Tashar's administration before that, uh, Lyda Crucian's administration, Sam Page's administration, you know, so, and so many groups, especially so many uh, African-American mm -hmm. and other groups who are out there on this issue, so they are they, they they are pushing back. I don't disagree with that, but I think the passion is all on one side. It's all those people who occupy an hour and a half of the allotted 30 minutes for the county council, one after another, and I'm not gonna, you know, respectfully, they're not, we're, we're not coming together. It'd be nice, maybe there's other issues we can come together on. I think it's time for the folks on the pro, science side to have a little passion that's all. No, I, I hear you now if i were an elected official or an appointed official i would call a lot of people a lot of names and i wouldn't passionate. but i wouldn't but i wouldn't do it publicly you mentioned the dome they, earlier they, Elliot, Elliot, move it on and, we and mentioned no, the no, dome i'm gonna we, make this one point okay and then right. i'm gonna move to the <laughs> dome uh i interviewed a uh, mom whose daughter died at 37 years old of COVID. uh she didn't get the shots and whatnot and uh on her uh, deathbed 
I'm not deathbed, I'm sorry, as she was in, in the final moments of her life, uh, she was trying to mouth to her mom, I wish I had taken the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did that story. It ended up going national, CNN, mm -hmm. every place else. And she got letters from the White House and whatever. So you can't tell me that lady is not passionate. Yeah, right. She All is. Right. And guess what? Yeah. She's not the only one who's lost someone. There's a lot of passionate people out there. Okay, now. now the Dome. Um, <laughs> People are passionate about it. <laughs> when, when, <laughs> yes. when there was a football team in it, when there was not a football team in it. All right, there are still uh, some folks, Bob Clark, who's no longer <clears throat> here, but up in Chicago, but still has uh, offices here. Uh, he would like it to be torn down and to kind of start all over on the, at least that part of the convention center. And quite frankly, I kind of agree with him. Elliot, what do, you, what do you foresee with that? I think it's a certain logic. Uh, to it, I think that first you have to study this thing, and I don't know whether they've hired an engineering firm to do a comprehensive study, one, the cost, uh, and two, what you're aiming for when you get this final convention center. Mm -hmm. So they're talking about spending what, uh, it's going to cost a half a billion dollars uh, for this thing with uh, everything, with the, with the things they're talking about. So what do you end up at the end? One thing I haven't seen, and I did a story on Dome some couple of years ago, I, I couldn't find a city that was able to repurpose a dome. Dome, when the team had moved on or that dome got older or whatever. I couldn't find one. Maybe there's one now that somebody could figure out what to do with it. We would be the first. But there's a reason people haven't been able to repurpose a dome because it's built to be a football stadium. You know, it's, it, you, can't make your, you can't make your car into a semi-truck, no matter how much you work on it. And so you might be at this point where they were saying that the convention center is not uh, up to modern, it's not up to snuff, right. that it needs all of this stuff. And so sometimes maybe you're better off just tearing it down and rebuilding it, and then you can build it the way you want to build it. But then you have to look at the cost and all that. I was so it has say, to be studied. I say re respectfully on this, you know, a convention center is nice, and we have one. It might not, you know, it might really be a football stadium, but it's also a convention center. I'm just afraid that with this newfound wealth, we're just going to be spending wildly, like a new do a new convention center is what we need. And if they say it's half a billion dollars, that's what they say now. When they start building it, it's going to go it'll up. turn out to be, and all of a sudden, this big pile of money that we had that we were so proud of, it's gone, and our jail still doesn't have locks, you know? I mean, <laughs> that work. Well, yeah. yeah. You know, no. It's, it's and it. I, I mean, uh, if it's, what is it like, did they say like a million dollars or two million dollars a year for the maintenance, for the upkeep for the dome? Yes. Um, and, and I distinctly remember sitting in the dome and watching an NCAA event or two, you know, whether it was the Final Four or the Elite Eight or, or whatever it was. Um, and I'm thinking of the ancient ruins of Bush Stadium, remember, that had to be dug under because they were too old. At, they were 40 years of age. I think we're, we're really painting ourselves into a very expensive corner, aren't we, in terms of what, how, how old buildings are and when they should be replaced? <laughs> Hundreds of millions of dollars we're talking about. I'm just speaking old, you're looking at me. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, which I understand. And Relics. I'll look over at my <laughs> fellow founder. He made me think about this. 790 million, by the way, is about what we would have had to spend to yeah. keep the Rams here. 750 for 10 years. million. That's, exactly. right. So That's right. At least we got, we received it instead of spent it. And, um, but the, the dome has been such an interesting thing. In 77, when it was built, it was the state-of-the-art convention center. And in 92, we were told it was obsolete 15 years later. And that's when they used the, the original stadium was sold to people like me. It was rationalized. It was going to cost $250 million, 260 I think. But 150 was going to be what we needed expanded as a convention center. So they've always kind of morphed them together. I, I love Bob Clark. I think Parkway guy. Um, I think he, he really is just, we should listen to him generally. But I don't think, I don't, we should not underestimate the importance of getting something done right away to upgrade what is a genuinely deteriorating have. convention center. I think they've got to move forward with the existing center. But at some point, I think it would be worth studying I don't know about tearing the dome down so much. It's just what other things we could do to enhance it. You have to have, you just can't give up on convention business in this town. As many problems as we have, you can't give up. I wasn't on saying it. that. I'm just saying the no. dome part. 
the that don't part. part. I understand. Yeah. I understand. That's but part. I that's think it's, yeah. That's, a, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the don't part. And I don't think, uh, now, you know, you talk about speed. St. Louis has so many other problems. Mm -hmm. Whether it gets the convention center done in two years, four mm -hmm. years, five years, eh, we've got a gazillion other things that we have to deal with, like crime mm -hmm. and poverty and so many other issues that's confronting St. Louis that we have to pay some attention to. And yeah. Rita mm -hmm. is not going to go away. Nope. She is mm -hmm. not going to go away on this on this North County recreation. She, well, but see, that's, that's where that's the county, connected. that's where that money from that's the right. county, from this $500 million well, right. pot, that's right. all going to be in there. Okay. Okay. She's speaking she, of money. She shouldn't go away. Right. No, I, I agree with you, for this but that's, they'll be haggling over that money that's and where right. that goes to. <laughs> all right, speaking of money, we do need it to stay on the air. Uh, help us. <laughs> Thank you for sticking with us as we watch this episode of Donnybrook, and we look forward to you sticking with us through the next segment. But right now, we're going to take a minute or two to ask for your support for this program. And you know the deal. When we are here asking for your support, we're giving you something in return. Not just the great programming like this, but also thank you gifts. Right now, this being the season of giving a great holiday gift, would be to join us at the $75 level. And in return, you're either going to get the 9 PBS Stories That Move Us mug, which is a hefty size mug, I must say, or one ticket to join us at Donnie Bash. And uh, this would be a great gift for someone you just don't know what to get. Even better, if you join us at a one-time contribution uh, at $144, or as a sustaining member at $12 a month, you are going to receive two tickets, so that would be great. How about uh, your dad or your uncle or your best friend that you maybe have political differences with? Wouldn't it be fun to go to Donnie Bash together? Because when you do go, you're going to be able to go to the pre-bash, the pre-reception, uh, and enjoy some cocktails and talk to the folks all around you. Then you go in, you see the show, and then after the show, there's another reception, and you can talk about it again. So we invite you to come with a friend, come with a family member, be a part of Donnie Bash. And in doing so, you're going to be part of 9PBS. Give us a call right now, won't you? Hi, everyone. I'm Ren Marty, and I am here with everyone's favorite Donnie Brookers. Um, so everyone, tell me... How does it feel to be back live in studio again after Great. about a year? Wonderful. Oh, 19 months. 19 months. 19 months. And, and who's right. counting, right? Who's counting? Who's counting, right? <laughs> and we thought it was going to be a month or two yeah. when it all first yeah. started. And yeah. it, was so, it, it was so nice to be back. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it, it's funny how doing Pledge, we said, like, ah, you know, Pledge, you know, like, yeah, and we, we're sincere and need your help. So in all sincerity, but you know how you jokingly say, like, man, if I never do another pledge, it'll be fine with me. And now I just regret <laughs> saying that because I'm so happy <laughs> to, to be, be here and talking to you and, and asking for your support. And if you, you need to get the two tickets to Paradise, not just one. And if you get one <laughs> and get the mug, the one with the lipstick on it is Wendy's. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And put it in a shadow box. Yeah. You know? By the way, Kate is absolutely right yeah. about how substantial these mm -hmm. mugs are. Yeah, nice. um, you could almost use it as a weapon if you have a break oh, in Oh, let's not even talk that way. It, it is that. It is that I, I'm joking, it's, of course. Not a, <laughs> nine PBS <laughs> protects you. Nine <laughs> PBS <laughs> protects you. But, but yeah, we're delighted to be back. And it, it was surreal for a while. I mean, it really mm -hmm. was surreal coming back in the building mm. and realizing when Alvin and I were leaving after that first night, we both stopped on the parking lot and we thought, we said out loud, it's been 19 months. Mm. It right. was 19 months. Right. So being back in this beautiful set and with our friends, I mean, at, at, at home, it's, it's very special. I, don't, I, yeah. I think the show is much better and it's more fun when, when we're, you know, bantering with each other instead of on the screen. Although I do miss Ruben. The cat. <laughs> That's right. We were just and talking about the cat. Yeah, so when we were yeah. doing that at home, all of a sudden, there was Ruben right yeah, out yeah, of the yeah, yeah. Special, I, I special guest star. It was just too much. The halo light, 
the whole thing, you know, and he just, it's like, what, what is going on? What, what is this? Right, so. Well, and, and don't forget uh, Ray's Fly. Ray's Fly. Fred. Uh, Fred. Oh, yeah. Are you talking about Fred? Ray's Fred. Fly. Yes. Fly. Fred, Fred Fly. Fred was, Fred was there. No, I, I have to tell you, I am excited about Donnie Fish. I mean, oh, for real, because we missed that. We and did. And I was so glad to see it's on a Thursday. At first I saw it, I thought, we can't do it. It's a Thursday. And then, oh, we're on it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no, but oh, Thursday, about June 9th. Right. What, what did they June get? What did they get? June 9th. Yeah, June 9th. You've got to come back. We really, that's our, that's going to be that's a the party. highlight of our year as far as that, because it, it's just, we really do, um, it's just a great night for us. I mean, yeah. I, and I hope for our, our viewers, but I mean, selfishly, we get to, you know, first of all, we get some tips to what to say before the show. True. <laughs> and, and, and the feedback is, is, um. You know, until Alvin just takes over the show, but no. at least for a while, <laughs> yeah. we're all there. No, I was kidding. Yeah. But like we really do have fun. Jagger, we do have, we do have, uh, we do have, we really do seriously have fun. And, and, and the audience has such a big part to play because mm -hmm. it's just impossible not to want to play to people. That's right. right. I mean, right. People you, love you know, it. People yes, feed off right. your I mean, I've it, been it, there. I've been in that crowd. Yeah. And that was what September of. 2019 or maybe yeah. it was October oh we had the gosh, last one. Was that's, that that's, was the last one. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess yeah. we were told before and the last time we did this was March of 2020. Wow. That's that's that incredible. It's, it's so right. long ago. I yeah. remember I was still calling it the Zoom. No. The Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just an age joke. Yeah. No, um but the um I, I is you know there was a certain at first I thought well this is convenient you just sort of you know just go downstairs as Bill says, it really, it's just not the same. Yeah. The, the ch chemistry of being around each other is, uh, it's just night and yeah. day for us. And so I, I know all of the viewers are yeah. thrilled to see you guys yeah. back, not in your boxes. Every Everyone uh, loved it, though. Everyone yeah. tuned in. You guys made quite the pivot. And, <laughs> and Anne Marie Berger, the award winning. The uh, award winning. Anne Marie Berger does Berger. such an amazing job, uh, in my opinion, just kind of keeping us keeping all us well fixing mm -hmm. a new environment here for us so we yeah appreciate Creating, it. right yeah. Oh, and, and coming up with next up yeah oh I mean, yeah yes. that was that the, yeah so good. that has been we excellent not to pat yeah, ourselves yeah. on the back because that was you know came from Anne Marie and it that you know I was so frightened of everything because it was new well, sure and I'm old you know but everything <laughs> like oh that wasn't so bad you know yeah. when the first yeah. when we did yeah. you know next up oh that wasn't so bad right uh, well and it really was wonderful to have you know, social media is either a blessing or a curse, mm -hmm. but during the pandemic, it was so wonderful to keep up with our Donnybrook family, you know, the viewers who were wanting to connect with us and they were able to do that on Twitter yeah. and, and Facebook, so. Well, let's hop on over to Kate and she's going to send you, or tell you all about the thank you gifts to say thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. And yes, thank you very much. And yes, I'm glad they brought up Anne Marie and they brought up the crew and how great it is to be back in the studio because while you're getting a great viewing experience from that, you know it costs money and that's why we're here. I'm just going to be direct. We're asking for your support. Please join us at the $75 one-time membership and you'll receive the mug or you'll get the ticket to Donnie Brook, which Donnie Bash, which is June 9th, by the way. 2022 at 6 p.m. it starts or even better join us as a sustaining member at $12 a month you will get two tickets and you will also receive the mug so think of it this way you'll have a Christmas gift or a Hanukkah gift or a holiday gift to be able to take someone to Donnie Bash and you can go along too you'll also have the mug that you can keep or give away and it's a great way of showing that you put your money where your mind is that you enjoy the programs on 9 PBS and that you support them won't you please give us a call or uh, come to uh, online at 9pbs.org. That's N-I-N-E-P-B-S dot org. Thank you. Speaking of money, Eric Wright has just got a million dollars of it from one of the co-founders of Home Depot. Does it change the race at all? Uh, does Eric Schmidt now need to go out and go door to door trying to get some money <coughs> for his run uh, for Senate? Where do we stand with uh, Eric Wright? Schmidt has got a quarter of a, a, million, a billion from some wing nut. I, I don't know what it was. But, uh, no, I mean, of course not. I mean, Greitens is... Nothing like dialing back the yeah. rhetoric, yeah. Ray. <laughs> well, no, I'm, well, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not the one calling it. Hey, yeah, that's... But, that's like, I, yeah. I'm not doing this kumbaya stuff. This is a... This is a, a this is a knife fight at this point. Is the way it is. But the fact is that that uh, 
No, I mean, I, I think that <laughs> the dynamic of this race is not going to be affected. Uh, Eric Greitens has an almost unlimited supply of dark money available to him by definition of who he is. So that is, you can't even look at campaign finance rates. You know, in the Democratic side, you can't. Lucas Kuntz has got a million dollar lead. I mean, but those are people who play by the normal rules. These guys, it, it doesn't really, and these are legitimate campaign contributions, but who knows how many illegitimate ones there are. I, I think that it's fascinating to watch this Republican thing because most Republicans that you talk to are very concerned about Greitens being the, the Senate, uh, the Nominate. candidate. And so it's sort of killed a man with a ball, everybody ganging up on him. But the problem they have is if there's enough people dividing up the non greitens vote, I think what he's counting on is he's going to win. And I, I haven't found anybody that really knows how to handicap this yet. I mean, I just feel like the, 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 the other ones out there are our attorney from Central West End. He's fallen off a cliff out there. Um, oh, McCloskey. A, a McCloskey. Cliff. I, I McCloskey. really wonder McCloskey. what he's even but, doing. But I, I think that was a 15-minute situation. I don't know what he was doing. I mean, doing. I, I do. 15 minutes of fame, and I don't know that he... You have to know a lot about politics when you enter a race like right. this. So is it just Greitens Schmidt, Bill, you think? Just well, you know, you know, you know, I think that McCloskey is still, still has some legs yet, yet, and I don't know the... Uh, Congress people from out state. Well, I mean, you know, Vicky Hart. Vicky Hartzler has a very serious. Yeah, I mean, they, they might be serious. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, it really is to me this confounding problem of Eric Schmidt knows better and still does the wrong thing. McCloskey doesn't know better and does the wrong thing. <laughs> Which one would you rather have from a moral perspective? I mean, hey. McCloskey. There's always the hope that he would return to be what he once was, but I, I don't know. I, I think Greitens is the heavy favorite because he, he is the bad guy, and right now in Missouri, hey, that's, that's a good place if, to be. If he's trying to assume the mantle of the Trump yeah. candidate, then I think you're right. I, th I think it's Greitens, but it, hey. it, it makes me, once mm -hmm. again, I surprise even myself at how naive I can be. Because I thought I, I declared Eric Greitens dead, forever dead, in, in political circles, and sure. I was wrong again. I don't think a million dollars is going to make a huge difference in this race. They're going to spend so much money, uh, uh, a million will look like a drop in the bucket. I don't think it matters. I think, I hope it's Greitens, because I'll tell you what, I know people... This may sound partisan, but Jason Cantor didn't lose by that much last time. And, you are right. And the, Eric Greitens can be beat by Scott Sifter and Lucas Kuntz. And, and um, I think, as I said, I get the folks mad here locally because Scott Sifton's a very respected, one of the smartest guys in the legislature, but Eric, Lucas Kuntz has got, a, has got a fire in him that I, I haven't seen a Democrat. He doesn't sp talk like a Democrat. And uh, he, he could really be a What hand. does he talk like? He talks like a normal person that just says what he thinks. He <laughs> says, he says like, he doesn't speak any politics. Well, that, was, that was actually a sign, a sign well, bite, wasn't yeah. it? No, I mean, he, he talks like... He doesn't he, you talk know what like he a called? Democrat, he, he talks like work. a normal he person. He tweeted this week <laughs> about weed. What, what politician uses the phrase weed when he's talking about marijuana? I mean, he talks Anybody about... Anybody who was born after No, no, not, in a, not a politician in a tweet. Uh-uh. And, and oh, he yeah. talks in a very plain-spoken... <laughs> Language, but let's not talk about it. Let's, let's you know, I, I think Trump is just so popular in outstate Missouri that I I don't think anybody with a D after their name has a chance. Right, well, we'll see. Right, we'll we see. Got we got, we I got time. You. Didn't you pop up in a political ad one time for something you said on the show? Or, or <laughs> well, oh, that's uh, right. Well, that. well I, I, it, it was a column I wrote <laughs> about Becky Cook when she was running against John Hancock, and I called her. Becky Crook. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so oh, John oh, Hancock John ran that. an ad saying, the Post-Dispatch calls my opponent <laughs> Becky Crook. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the, and the paper had to call him and say, you know, that's our irresponsible <laughs> column. <laughs> that's, our <laughs> you know, that, that's not the newspaper. Yeah, that's right. So. All right, well, the circuit attorney, Kim Gardner, she had like a town hall. And one of the things she said was like, look, love me, hate me. Everybody seemed to be against me as soon as I walked in this door. Like, I never, I never really had a chance because people were just uh, so hostile toward me, starting with uh, the police department. So, Bill, um, did she not kind of get a fair shake when she first, you know, was sworn well, into the well, office? Well, you have to remember, she ran on the platform that this is a corrupt system and everybody in it is corrupt, and she won. And then she was surprised that all these corrupt people 
resented it. You know, so so I don't have much sympathy for her, and and the office has become so dysfunctional, and people who Turnover. should be charged aren't charged, and there's a, more acquittals than we're used to. So so I I I don't have a lot of sympathy for Kim Gardner. If you're going to accuse everybody in the system of being corrupt, you can't expect them to say, hey, welcome here. Well, and it's not unique to the circuit attorney's office in the city of St. Louis. This has happened in Suffolk County in Massachusetts. This has happened in Dallas, Texas. This has happened in San Antonio, Texas. The wave of progressive circuit attorneys came in and they got the same amount of blowback with the agenda that Kim Gardner has had here. So I, I know that it feels unprecedented to her, but it has happened everywhere that there were progressive candidates voted in. I think it can be argued that those other cities, she was the disruptor and the disruptees didn't appreciate it. That's clear. And, and you're right, reform prosecutors around the country, especially some African Americans and especially some African American women have run into the blowback. I think it's fair to say that she's gotten more of it, more intensely, and this movement to essentially win by disbarring her, which is going to is a live effort by the legal community that's going on until at least February, is because she won 60% of the vote. She won re-election, and that is not a small thing. The, here's what I would say about Kim Gardner. She has drawn the ire of so many people because she went after Greitens. Had she not gone after Greitens, I don't think anybody would care about Kim Gardner. They didn't care. I, I was around to cover George Peach, and he was soliciting prostitutes. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't this much uh, uh, anger at George Peach. And he was, I forgot the name that he used, but I'm not going to... Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson. Larry, Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> but he was soliciting prostitutes, and no one was saying really... A, it wasn't a big, wasn't a big public uproar about well, he George Peach. He got thrown out. He got out. thrown he out the door. Out. But people still didn't hate George Peach. Well, he uh, didn't declare war on the police right, department right. for one So I, I think, uh, but in Kim Gardner's case, I think it's the people who are still angry that she went after Greitens. I agree with See, you. I she I was the I, cause, I, I honestly, and they I, believed that, Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say, like, I agree with you on that. Now, what has gone on since, since now. after that? Has, has not endeared her to a lot of people. Here's, but I kind of do feel that if she, if that case had never happened... Nobody would care I, what I, she I was... Don't, I don't disagree with that. I disagree with that. Let me make with this that. other point, because many yeah. of the people really... Let me say this. Many of the people in outstate areas, uh, they aren't uh, going to bed at night worrying about homicides in North St. Louis. Mm -hmm. the, you know, it's not... It's not first the first thing on their list. I mean, we didn't talk about it as much with D. Joyce Hayes or Jennifer Joyce or any of these other people. I think it's important because I was born and raised near across street from Pruitt Igo Project. So, but what I would say is nobody criticized Kim Gardner more than I did, and I did it on social media for four years. Uh, from I was the first reporter to criticize her um, uh, because of a handling of a case of Vu Lee. The uh, Asian immigrant who was beaten up uh, in South St. Louis, and 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 so I criticized her from that, and and criticized her being soft on crime, uh, giving too many breaks to criminals, anything you can think of. I was her main criminal. I mean criminal. Come sorry. <laughs> uh, credit. Oh, credit. Uh, there's uh, a sound bite. All right. Hey, and there's another the side bite. All right, we only got thirty but, seconds. But, but I'm, gonna, 30 I'm, seconds. I'm, I'm gonna make this one. But yeah. voters voted in the election, and voters uh, sent her back yeah. with a 60% majority. Yep. And so at some point in time, you have to step back and say, what is it that voters seeing? I think that voters believe that they'll get a fairer shake in the justice system with Kim Carter. All right, then. Hey, if you want to get in touch with us, please send the correspondence to Donnybrook, care of 9 PBS, 3655 Olive Street, St. Louis, Missouri, 63108. Or send something to Donnie, an email to Donnybrook at 9pbs.org. Tweet hashtag Donnybrook STL. You can find us at your favorite place to find your favorite podcast. Ellie Davis, thank you for sitting in thank with you. us tonight. It's been once a pleasure. Again, once Appreciate again, thank it. you for your, uh, thank you, congratulations on your Media Person of the Year Award. Appreciate Anne Marie it. is behind the scenes bringing us to you. Thank, uh, congratulations to you, Anne Marie, and your crew with Living St. Louis. Thank you all for watching. And first person to say it, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. We'll be here all month. Have a great night.
Donnybrook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS. Hi again, everyone. I'm Ern Mardia, and I'm so glad to be here with you tonight as we enjoy the lively conversation that our Donnybrookers are having. Um, I just want to take a moment to say thank you so much for those of you who are already members and those of you who are thinking about it and becoming future members tonight. So when, we, we, when you become a member, we want to say thank you so much by sending some incredible gifts your way. So that includes at the one time $75 level, you'll receive a ticket to Donny Bash that's on June 9th, 2022, so next year at 6 p.m. That's a Thursday night, so you will have an actual live Donny Brook Thursday night experience. Um, but you'll also, you'll have the choice of getting a mug, so you'll get either the ticket or the mug at the $75 one-time level. Then at the $12 a month level, becoming a sustaining member, we want to say thank you by sending you a pair of tickets as well as the Donnybrook mug. That's right, the mug that you see out on the table tonight that your favorite Donnybrookers are drinking out of, enjoying their tea or water, you know, you can be just like them. So that is at the $12 a month level. That's our way of saying thank you so much for becoming members. Right now, you can give us a call at 800-568-9099 or log on to the website at 9pbs.org. That's N-I-N-E pbs.org and let's go over to Kate and your favorite Donnie Brooker. Well, I'm glad to be here and I know you're going to be glad to be at Donnie Bash when you join and and uh, you all have been doing Donnie Bash for a long time. Yeah. I know that there are people who come back over and over again. Oh, it's going to be nice to see him again. It will. I it mean, really will be. We have a crowd from Greenville, Illinois. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Almost it, like a flotilla. Yeah, and, it, and it, it's always fun to see them and tell, hear and tell Greenville stories. It is, and I think it's going. To, I think it's going to be a really just an explosively fun night to have all of those people together. You know, all of us in one space, and uh, you you just don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Right. It's going to be great. Right. And, Bill, you can wear shorts because this will be the first one we've done in the summertime. Well, I, 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 I <laughs> might wear shorts. Uh, yeah. And I know one of the highlights for me yeah. is my grandkids come. Oh, Those they're the ringers. And Evie, who is now 11, oh, gosh. Uh, she, she got to ask the last question. You know, when they come around at, at the very end yeah. and mm -hmm. people in the audience are asking questions and somebody asked, what's the best pizza? And then Evie had a chance for the last mm -hmm. question, and she said, what's the best ice cream? Mm -hmm. And I said, it's Ted Drew's, and we're going. <laughs> oh, that's yes. fantastic. So, uh, yes. Right yes. after I, the I show. mean, it, it's such a blast. Yeah, You know, really I, I do think that's one of the things that people really do enjoy about coming to Donnie Bash. You all talk about your families so much mm -hmm. on air, you know, and for them to have a chance to meet them and... Their families are gracious enough to show up and be put on display. Oh, well, well, my grandkids in particular enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, they love it. Uh, that's genetic, I tell them. Yeah. Yeah. I, think that's, I think that's right. And, and one of the things that you guys talked about during the last break a little bit I want to bring up again is Next Up. I think that has been such a terrific thing. I didn't know it was coming, and the first time I was watching it, it was there, and it was so timely for for you all to be able to talk to the medical experts yeah. yes. or, or, or politicians and you know as we were all trying to figure our way through the pandemic as we still are you know it, it that was really a great thing and we wish that we could take the credit but Anne Marie the aforementioned Anne Marie who has who has won this press club award along with the living St. Louis uh, team she's great in a crisis and she moved us through that crisis and made sure that we had everything obviously nine PBS sent everything to our homes that we had to have but 
that was really something to watch. We didn't miss a week. Not a week. That, that was the part that I'm still amazed at. And to watch right. Next Up take shape. Yeah. You and, know, and, and I hear people all the time say to me, I really like that Next Up because I learned something. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, like, we're, we're entertaining. <laughs> but but <laughs> next up, up is about you learn something. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's really yeah. been great. Well, people loved the the Ted Simmons, especially you know oh. because oh, that was I got more that response was, to that. And I oh, said like, gosh. oh, I got to go fanboy kind of. But no, he was good. He you was. know, like I said, like and and we, so many of the guests were really like they were beyond like knowledgeable. They presented things in a way that you could really understand. And uh, that is what uh, we try to do every week here absolutely. on Johnny Park, is present right. things you can understand, get differing opinions, and uh, we really hope that you will join us for Donnie Bash on June 9th. Ern Mardia? That's right. You will not want to miss Donnie Bash. I've been there. It is so much fun. And like they were talking about Donnie Brook next up and the pivot that they were able to make. Um, and just bringing you, continue to bring you relevant information and to keep you informed um, during this crisis. Um, we are able to only do that kind of work and to bring you that trusted information because of viewers like you and because of your generous contribution. And so when you make that contribution, whether you're already a sustainer, you know, and you, you want to do so again, you know, or if you are a new member, you're sitting, you're thinking about it and you're like, hmm, I want that mug or I want to be there live in that action, you know, we want to say thank you. And so at the $75 month, or not month, sorry, one time $75, you have the choice of getting a ticket to Donnie Bash. So like I said, be there live in action. You'll see, you'll be able to hear the witty banter and join in on the conversation. You'll see Bill's granddaughter probably, you know, say hi to her. Um, so that is at the $75 level, or you can receive the mug. So you have yourself a really solid choice there. But then also behind door number two, you have the choice of becoming a sustaining member at the $12 a month level or one time $144, but uh, you'll receive a pair of tickets as well as that awesome camping mug that says nine PBS. If you're super proud of the new brand, I know we are, you know, and you're thinking that the stories move you all the time when you're watching nine PBS. Well, carry around that mug, show your family members proudly, you know, think of us fondly when you're enjoying your, your morning coffee. You know, but we just want to say thank you so much for being a member. Thank you. Um, we hope that you enjoyed the program tonight. Um, we hope to see you at Donnie Bash on June 9th.